As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we read Psalm 73. Truly God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone, my steps were well nigh slipped, for I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity, for they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within, the conceits of their hearts overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil, they talk of oppression from an eye. They set their lips against the heavens, and their tongues ranges around the earth. And so the people turn to them, and find in them no fault. They say, How should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, ever at ease they increase their wealth. Is it vain that I cleanse my heart and wash my hands in innocence? All day long I have been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then thought I to understand this, but it was too hard for me, until I entered the sanctuary of, the, of God and understood the end of the wicked. How you set them in slippery places, you cast them down to destruction. How suddenly they come to destruction, perish and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered, I was pierced to the quick. But I was foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge that I may tell of all your works. Why do good things happen to bad people? Well, it's too difficult for us to understand why the wicked seem to prosper. But in the end, when we come into God's presence, we understand that he is the just judge of all the earth and he will judge the wicked and there will be a reward for the righteous. Job continues his defense. Job chapter 28. Surely there is a mine for silver, and a place for gold to be refined. Iron is taken out of the earth, and copper is smelted from all. Miners put an end to darkness, and search out to the furthest bound, the ore in the gloom and deep darkness. They open shafts in a valley, away from human habitation. They are forgotten by travellers. They sway, suspended, remote from people. As for the earth, out of it comes bread. But underneath it is turned up as by fire. Its stones are the place of sapphires, and its dust contains gold. That path no bird of prey knows, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The proud animals have not trodden it, the lion has not passed over it. They put out their hand to the flinty rock, and overturn mountains by the roots. They cut out channels in the rocks, and their eyes see every precious thing. The sources of the rivers they probe, hidden things they bring to light. But where shall wisdom be found, and where is the place of understanding? Mortals do not know the way to it, and it is not found in the land of the living. The deep says it is not in me, and the sea says it is not in me. It cannot be bought for gold, and silver cannot be weighed out as its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of Hophra in the precious onyx or sapphire. Gold and glass cannot equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of the coral or of crystal. The price of wisdom is above pearls. The Sutherite of Ethiopia cannot compare with it, nor can it be valued in pure gold.
Where then does wisdom come from? And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Abaddon and death say we have heard a rumour of it with our ears. God understands the way of it, and he knows its place, for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave to the winds its weight and apportioned out the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the thunderbolt, then he saw it and declared it. He established it and searched it out. And he said to humankind, Truly, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Where does wisdom come from? Can't be bought. Just because people are rich doesn't make them wise. It can't be mined, it can't be gained from uh, natural measure. Real wisdom, real understanding comes from the Lord. There's a difference between education and learning and knowledge. And th th then there's a difference between all of those things and wisdom. Wisdom is how to apply that knowledge, that learning, that understanding. Wisdom comes from God. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of it himself more highly than you ought, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. It all starts in mind. We need to have our minds transformed to think God's way. Lord, we lift up to you this day and we pray, Lord, that you will renew our minds. That, Lord, we can have that wisdom that comes from you. We can think in your ways. We can apply the knowledge that we have got from your word and the knowledge we have got from experience to the situations that we face today and so, Lord, show true wisdom. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.